Hello everyone, it's Chris Priestman here from HookedGamers.com and today I'm bringing you a review of Comic Jumper The Adventures of Captain Smiley. With this latest game from the developers of Splosion Man and the Moor, Twisted Pixel have realised their original project a character formed in the mind of one of the team during his youth. In Comic Jumper you play as Captain Smiley, a hero in a comic book that is slowly losing his audience. Captain Smiley also has a sidekick called Star attached to his chest, but he actually does nothing except add plenty of humour into the game. The game is a 3D side-scrolling action game. It mainly consists of shooting, but there are moments when you will need to use your fists and at times you will run towards the background shooting as well. The title of the game refers to what you will be doing as Captain Smiley's comic has been cancelled. The idea is to earn money by guest starring in other comic books until he has enough money to relaunch his series again. The layout of the game has you entering into three other comic books other than your own, each with their own style. First is Nanok the Obliterator, which is a long-standing fantasy comic book with a watercolour effect. If you hadn't realised, Nanok is actually Conan backwards and the character himself is an obese version of Arnie. As you can imagine, the game breaks the fourth wall and constantly makes reference to popular culture throughout. I challenge you to spot each reference throughout the game. Good luck, you'll need it. The next comic on the list is called Improbable Paper Pals. This is a Silver Age comic with a matching look. Although the graphics in the first two comics are not brilliant, Improbable Paper Pals and the last one, a manga called Cutie Cutie Kid Cupid stand out for their portrayal of comic books and video games. They are a treat to simply look at and appreciate in their execution. The voice acting and script are well done and provide a good many cutscenes that are both original and funny, sometimes even using live action as well. The great thing about Comic Jumper is the involvement of the team in the game. They seem to pop up everywhere. Not only are they the company that owns the means of transport that allows Captain Smiley to travel from comic book to comic book, but they are also present in the voices, the music, and whilst fighting, if overwhelmed, you can call upon them to raise the screen of enemies. I am afraid I have some bad news now though. This is where my praise of the game pretty much ends. In truth, you will have more fun watching the game rather than playing it. The problem seems to be that the developers were not sure whether they were creating a film or a comic book. Needless to say, they weren't making much of a game. I for one am severely disappointed as the game showed so much promise, and being a fan of Twisted Pixel's previous two games, I was hoping this would follow suit. However, what seems to be evident is that the team was so in love with themselves, and concentrated on all the other elements that they completely disregarded the most important part of the game, the gameplay. In short, it is really bad. The simplicity of the controls are still present, that has not been lost, but the smoothness and the clever but simple little puzzles that Twisted Pixel have become associated with is completely gone. Most of the time you'll be running in one direction, aiming around the screen with the fire button held down. Occasionally you will have to slide and jump to avoid an enemy, and you'll have to do plenty of climbing while shooting. I noticed straight away, and I am sure that you can too, that the way Captain Smiley runs is not right. It's slow and very mechanical. The same can be said for all other elements in the gameplay. When you are running away from the screen on rails or sliding down a hill, you are hindered by bad camera angles, and the aiming reticle feels like it's pulling the weight of a thousand planets along with it. Plus, it is not that accurate. I noticed that there was an auto-aim to assist you, but with this on, it seemed even more restricted so that was quickly disabled. When you are not shooting, you will be engaged in melee combat, which is very slow and stiff and comes only with a handful of moves. The game seems to be a mashup of different types of gameplay, all as generic as each other. What's worse is that they are all at either one end of the difficulty spectrum or the other. The shooting is made too hard with a combination of weak weapons, limited movement, a screen overcrowded with enemies, a slow aiming reticule, checkpoints spaced too far apart, and no health pickups making it inevitable that you will die over and over again. The hand to hand battles are extremely easy, and if you do not get harmed, you will receive the help which can be used, as said earlier, to clear the screen of enemies. 
Very occasionally, you will also have sequences that require you to hit a button on time to progress. These sections are ridiculously easy and fairly bland to watch even. Even though I can appreciate the graphics in some places, I found that they actually hindered the gameplay. This was done by either blocking your view entirely with unnecessary logos, or in the manga comic, I found that the lack of colour caused everything to blend and I could barely make out what I was firing at or any hazards in my path. I found the game nothing short of frustrating and it wasn't my lack of skill. It feels like the game doesn't appreciate you playing it. When you die you are mocked in a way that slowly becomes irritating, blaming your death on your skill, when it is actually a lack of good game mechanics. It feels like a cheap shot. Good thing you don't have any the worst is yet to come. Although I have said the gameplay is bad and makes you begin to question whether you should carry on playing, it is made ten times worse when you repeat these bad mechanics over and over again. The only difference is a change in the environment. At first, the different look of the comic books perks you up in hope of some change, but you soon find more and more flaws of the gameplay and how it is combined with the scenery. Each level in the game, when you think about them, simply brings up memories of monotonous frustration. Although the graphics look better throughout the course of the game, they also become more and more intrusive. I can appreciate their look, but due to how they affect the experience of the game negatively, it causes them to lose points. Graphics gets a 5. The sound is actually very good in the game. The soundtracks are fresh and original with the team obviously having fun whilst creating them. The voice acting is also well done and the cutscenes are the highlights of the game. Sound receives an 8. The interface is another positive element. It's kept to the bare minimum, with Smiley's face coming up when he gets hurt and showing the remaining health. As you lose more and more health, this is also indicated in this colour of Smiley, who will gradually become whiter and whiter like he has been erased from the comic. It's a simple and effective way of showing you that you're nearly dead. The rest of the menus are simple and easy to use. Interface gets a 9. Replayability is a hard one to judge because there are so many elements to unlock. Throughout the game, you will earn money from each level which can be used to buy upgrades for Captain Smiley, although they don't seem to help him much. You can also buy loads of extras ranging from interviews to concept art and soundtracks. You don't just have to play the levels over though. Each level comes with challenge sections, which usually involve getting through a section unharmed. In the story, if you fail, you will simply lose the bonus. But in the challenge mode you will fail if you are touched, so it pays to hone your skills. On top of all this there are leaderboards to compare with your friends on the globe. The game itself comes in at about 5 hours in a single playthrough, but all the extras will provide you with many more hours in pursuit of them. Therefore the playability gets an 8. The game's main downfall, as I have highlighted, is its abysmal gameplay. It is frustrating, repetitive and not in line with the developer's standards or the rest of the game's features. It is made worse with destructive graphics and affects replayability as it really puts you off wanting to get the collectibles. With no further delay I'll give gameplay a 3. Unfortunately the game cannot be said much for its stability either. It is too focused on the parts of video games which mainly fluff the whole experience up. For me, the essential ingredient that makes a game a game is the gameplay and this is not given the time it deserves. If anything, I would say that Twisted Pixel may want to consider their next move. Are they interested in video games or motion pictures? It seems the latter has taken prominence. Stability therefore receives a 4. Overall, the game looks good in the majority and is quite fun to watch. The unique comic book style and simple game mechanics are reminiscent of those old retro games we know and love. The problem is that those old games, one example that springs to mind is Comic Zone, are actually fun to play and not just to look at. The whole gaming experience is in fairness quite atrocious. It doesn't matter how much I like the studio and their humour, it cannot bring the game through. I hope that Twisted Pixel will take the hint and go back to making the games they are good at. Overall, Comic Jumper receives a disappointing 4.8. Please visit our website at hookedgamers.com where you can find the latest news and articles on games across all platforms. Also check out our weekly podcast for an entertaining show that will keep you informed on all things gaming. 
Furthermore, make sure to search for us on Twitter, YouTube and Facebook. You can even chat to other gamers on our forums, just click the link at the top of the homepage. Hooked Gamers, because gaming is a lifestyle.